Yo, what's up YouTube? So, I'm back with another video. I know it's been a while since I dropped a video, but I'm finally back. And this video is going to be a really good video. If you read the title already, then you know what it's about. But for those of you who don't read titles, you just click videos or your notification gang, 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 gang. This video is going to be about the MEB process. So, for those of you going through the MEB process or the whole retirement separation VA claim process, then this video is for you and I need you guys to stick around, go turn off your lights, pop some popcorn, grab a pen, grab some paper. I'm gonna give you guys some really good information that you guys need to know for your whole VA claim and then going through the whole MEB process. When I went through the process, it was very complicated. Nobody took the time to explain it to me. The Peblo told me a few things, but it wasn't it wasn't easy to understand, if you get what I mean. So, I'm going to break it down for you guys. This video is probably going to be pretty long because it's a long process. So, I might break it up into two parts, part one and part two. And make sure you guys get some good information. And when I do the VA claim stuff, then I'll go through a few of my claims. I won't go through all of my claims, but I'll go through a few. Just to give you guys a general idea of what percentages I got because I don't really care. I got my percentage and that's that. So I'll go through a few of my VA claims just to give you guys a general idea of what to expect and what percentages I got for certain things. I'll probably do like my top 10 or not even top 10 but 10 random ones and they'll give you guys a good idea. So make sure you guys stay tuned. If you haven't already make sure you guys go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell. Make sure you get every notification to become part of my notification game. Make sure you guys give this a big thumbs up as well as once the video is done I need you guys to drop a comment let me know what you guys thought uh, make sure you guys go add me on Instagram my Instagram is 21 shades of J that's for two Y's and Snapchat's the next best thing Snapchat is Jarvis USAF those are the best ways to reach me so after this video if you guys have questions still you guys can go ahead and hit me up on Instagram but make sure you guys add me first and then ask me a question add then DM all right, so boom. First things first, you have a provider that recommends your case for a dog review. Dog is D-A-W-G. I'll place that right here just so you guys can understand what that is. Um, the dog gathers all your medical information and the things you're getting seen for and then potentially disqualifying factors or whatever. And they decide if it needs to be forwarded for an initial review. Um, it goes to I-R-I-L-O. So it's initial review in lieu of. So they decide if it needs to go that far so they'll make their determination and it'll go to IRILO. Now I do believe that a commander can recommend you for a medical board so a med board if you have like substandard performance due to whatever you got going on whether it's condition or injury but if it's not your commander it's going to be a physician who recommends your name for a dog review um, based off you had an injury that you're just not getting over or you have a certain condition that means you're not fit to be in the Air Force anymore. So you can go one of two ways, either your commander recommends you or your physician. Keep that in mind, but that's step one, go. So I didn't mention this in the first step, but the reason my case got forwarded to the dog was because of a left ankle injury. Um, I had a left foot injury or whatever that Prevented me from like doing all of my PT tests and just standing for a long period of time running X, Y, and Z. Like, so I had this injury that wasn't getting better and it was like a few years. I think the injury was back in January of 2017 and it just wasn't getting better. I was getting injections done, PRP injections, steroid injections, all type of things, surgery, everything. And it just wasn't getting better. So finally, my case was forwarded to the dog. All right, so next step is gonna be you receive a Peblo. This Peblo is your liaison. Peblo stands for whatever this is right here. But this person is essentially a liaison to answer any questions that you might have, schedule you for appointments, X, Y, and Z. Well, schedule you for an appointment. Um, this person is gonna be like your go-to person for everything that you have to ask. Um, some Peblos are better than others, just like any other job, some Peblos are better than others, but some can leave you confused and some just might not be on the job, you know, one might not be doing the right things, but whatever. Your Peblo is supposed to be liaison. So keep that in mind. Make sure you forward all questions to your Peblo. Any questions that your leadership might have or you might have, everything could, should be able to be answered through the Peblo. 
But your Pueblo is going to brief you on the whole process. You guys are going to sign some forms, direct deposit, X, Y, and Z, whatever. You guys are going to sign some forms. And the next step is going to be your Pueblo scheduling you for an exam. This way you can get evaluated for your potentially disqualifying, like, injury or condition. The Pebble is going to schedule you for an exam. That exam is going to be to evaluate whatever you were referred for. So if you were referred for migraines, back pain, leg pain, arm pain, you're going to get seen for it really quick. Um, I was referred once again for my left foot. So when I went to my exam, the lady evaluated my left foot, uh, had me do a couple things, stand on it, being X, Y, and Z, whatever. Had that done, and as she was reviewing my record, she saw that I also get Botox injections for migraines. Don't think I get Botox in my face, but I get Botox injections for migraines, and that's also another reason for me to be out of the military. So I was getting migraines so frequent and so so terribly that I had to get Botox injections in my in my scalp or whatever, and they it helped a little bit, but I always got migraines like five times a week easily but those were the two reasons why I was now getting pushed out of the military migraines and my left foot injury so after your exam your case is forwarded to AFPC AFPC makes the following determination AFPC decides if you're gonna return to duty return to duty with limitations or restrictions or if you're unfit for duty they're gonna initiate the MEB. If you reach this point, that means you were probably found unfit for duty. So now you're gonna go through the whole VA stuff. Um, you're gonna get an MSC officer, MSC stands for this. This person is gonna schedule you for your CMP exams and do some direct deposit stuff and everything else. Um, they don't do too much, but mainly it's gonna be their CMP exams, schedule you for your CMP exams. The compensation and pension exams are mandatory and you must make those. Um, unless you have a valid reason not to make it, like you know, a death in the family, you have another appointment schedule, but you need to let your Pueblo know as soon as possible, as well as your MSC, and let them know why you can't make it as soon as you get scheduled for it. When I was going through the process, we were going through COVID, so I wasn't getting scheduled for my CMP exams because of COVID. They weren't doing face-to-face, -face. so I had to wait about four months before I could get in face-to-face, -face, which made my process so much longer. My whole mayor board process was drawn out thanks to COVID-19. Prior to getting scheduled for your CMP exams, your MSC is going to send you a form. It's going to be like for compensation and pension or whatever for your compensation, the things that you want to claim. So I would suggest to you guys that wherever you guys are getting seen that, y'all go grab a medical record and get a full copy of your entire medical record and look it over. Uh, make sure you guys claim everything that you possibly can. I know during my whole disability claim thing, I claimed about 75 things. I talked to the Pueblo and the MSC officer and I asked them like, typically how many claims do they see? And they were like about 15 to 20. And I'm just like, well shit, I went overboard then. <laughs> Show me the money, what, what? But I claimed like 75 things, like anything I was seen for or diagnosed with, I claimed it just because I know what I was gonna get compensated for. And if it happened during my military service, I wanna be compensated for it. So. No matter what, if you were seen for it, diagnosed with it, like anything, I don't care if it was a sore throat, uh, your, your left eye is lazy, you losing hair, you got razor bumps, whatever. Make sure you guys claim it. You guys can get a little continuation sheet, and that's what I got because I had so many claims. But claim everything that you possibly can, man. At the end of the day, this is going to be the difference between your percentages and how much you get paid monthly. After you complete that form that the MSC officer sent you, you're going to send it back to them and they're going to schedule you for your CMP exam based off the things that you're claiming. Um, me, I believe I had an appointment for like a general appointment, which was like full body, had um, a psychiatrist evaluation. I had ears checked and eyes checked. I think I said, I think I had about four or five appointments. Um, in addition to those appointments, you guys are gonna have labs that you have to get taken, as well as x-rays. Um, if you claim, you know, broken bones, fractures, sprains, whatever. So you guys are gonna have a bunch of appointments that are mandatory that you guys need to make sure you go to. And 
this is where it gets good. For those of you who have a pen and a piece of paper out right now and you're writing this whole process down, I need you guys to make sure you guys underline this, highlight it, whatever the situation might be, because this right here is gonna be important. During your CMP exams, like your full body exam, like your general physical type of thing, you're gonna they're gonna go through your entire claim like sheet and they're gonna ask you questions and they're gonna have you do certain movements. I want you guys to know that as soon as you do a movement, if it hurts, you guys need to speak up. Like as soon as it hurts, so let's say you claim your left shoulder for whatever and they have you do one of these numbers and it hurts right here at this point, like raising it up, let them know, oh, it hurts right here. On a scale of 10, it's about seven, whatever. If they say, can you go any further? You can try it, whatever. If you can, you can, you can't, you can't. But let them know, hey, if you feel pain, let them know because that makes a difference when it comes to your percentage for everything you claim. Um, if, there, if there is pain with certain movements, I believe like you're automatically given 10% for certain things. Don't, don't give me the line, don't give me the line, but do your research. Um, there's websites out there that let you guys know this stuff, but make sure you guys let them know if you feel any type of pain, no matter what you're doing, what movement they have you doing, balling your fist up, like moving your neck side to side, um, or moving your head side to side, let them know if you feel pain. That's gonna be extremely important when it comes to your VA percentage. After your CMP exams, your Pebble is gonna call you in and they're gonna brief you on the results from your CMP exams. Um, during that time, you're gonna sign for it. Um, if you agree with it, disagree, you can rebuttal or whatever. In my case, I was okay with what they showed me and my temporary percentage was 100. I was okay with that. So I signed for it, I agree, nothing else needed. I ain't really care. So after being briefed by your Pueblo, the IPEB phase starts. Now the PEB phase or whatever starts, um, during that phase, they're gonna make a determination on if you're fit or unfit for duty. Um, that's really important. Um, they like have the say if you're fit or unfit or whatever. Um, PEB phase starts now.